We all love beat-em-ups. That's just the reality of the situation, babe. It's been one of my favorite genres since childhood, and has always been a reliable place for co-op gaming. Luckily for me and other belt scroller buffs, we've seen a resurgence of beat-em-ups in recent years that just hasn't existed since the early 90s. Some of the greatest brawlers of all time have come out in the last 10 years. We're talking Streets of Rage 4, River City Ransom Underground, Mother Russia Bleeds, and yeah, of course, Breakneck City. And it looks like there's going to be a lot more to get excited about in the near future. So let's talk about the top 10 upcoming co-op beat-em-ups. Let's just do this in alphabetical order. Buccaneers just showed up on my radar. It's a pirate themed four player arcade style beat em up. I don't know much about it, but the setting definitely stands out amongst all of the urban based environments of the other games on the list. Apparently it's a remake of the Buccaneers 1989 arcade game. They added totally new visuals, the ability to pick up weapons, you can now move up and down like most beat em ups, instead of just left and right like the original. There's new characters, enemies and environments, and can now play with up to four players, instead of the single player experience of the original, plus a ton of other features. I mean, with the amount of additions, it might as well be a totally new game. I'm really looking forward to see what else they have planned for this one. Jay and Silent Bob Chronic Blunt Punch is a game I frankly have a lot less excitement for. It just looks pretty low budget without a lot of originality. The art style is kind of uninspired, but you know, with the source material, I'm sure it has a lot of potential to be fun. That being said, the NES game that came out a few years ago, Mall Brawl, was actually pretty great. Maybe this one will surprise us. We'll see. Fallen City Brawl. This looks to be another one heavily influenced by Streets of Rage and Final Fight. I mean, like literally every other beat em up that's ever come around since then. I like the pixel art style and the huge sprites, although the game does look a little rough around the edges with some sluggish combat from what I've seen, but maybe the final release will be more polished. The trailer is in 4x3 to give it more of a vintage vibe. The sound effects sound really brutal, but might be a little overbearing. And some of the visuals seem to be a little bit too dark and just uh, not very well defined. I like seeing the variety of weapons included. In recent gameplay footage, it looks like the game is in 16x9, so maybe there'll be an option to switch the aspect ratio based on whatever your preference is. Maybe if they cleaned it up a little bit more, this game could be pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to see what features stay and what features are added in the final version. Final Vendetta looks to be another top-notch brawler. The developer's Bitmap Bureau also made Battle Axe, which was a gauntlet-influenced arcade-style dungeon crawler, as well as Xeno Crisis, a top-down shooter with some heavy alien meets Smash TV vibes. I loved both of those games and feel that they totally nailed both those genres and did an excellent job of paying homage to the vintage games that inspired them. Can't wait to see them take on the beat-em-up genre next. Final Vendetta has some amazing pixel art. The movement and animations look incredibly smooth. Bitmap Bureau have an excellent track record that more than proves they're capable of making great looking games that play solid as well. Hopefully they can add some much needed originality and flair to the beat em up genre. Again. And again. Yep, that's it. You got him, Miller. Metro Siege is another game that I've been following for a while. 
This is a brand new beat-em-up being made for the Amiga home computer. I can't believe how good this game looks for the hardware. When this finally comes out, it will probably be the most graphically impressive Amiga game ever. Metro Siege is supposed to run on an Amiga 500. That's 1987 hardware. That's not all this game has going for it. This just looks like a really great game, regardless of what it's running on. I absolutely love the visuals and color, the character design, and the combat looks really solid too. All I can say is Metro Siege is at the top of my list for games I'm most excited about. And for those that don't have access to rare and expensive computers from over 30 years ago, it looks like they're at least trying to get a Steam port, but hopefully we'll see some console versions as well. Unhos de Repugio is probably the most unique game on the list. I love the cartoon visuals. They really remind me of some 90s gross out Nickelodeon kind of art style. It's four player co-op. I believe the developers are from Brazil. It's supposed to be a satire about the pandemic. This is what the description says. The game has a fictional story of a global pandemic that engulfed the world and is being ignored by fanatics who do not believe that, that the disease is real. It is up to the main characters, four common citizens adequately protected with gloves and masks to deal with these fanatics and solve the situation with the force of her own fists. So I'm not really sure if this is making fun of the people that don't believe in COVID or the people that took it seriously. So take from that what you will. There's a demo that is currently available now on Steam and hopefully a full version in the near future. I loved the first River City Girls, even though I had to do one of the boss fights probably like 150 times. It was a really, really great game. The sequel seems to be more of that. If you liked the original one, you'll most likely love this one. And Way Forward has a great track record, so I feel like it's a no-brainer to get this one as soon as it comes out. Streets of Chaos seems to be more of the same. I don't see a whole lot of originality or variety here. The characters and enemies are a lot smaller on the screen, so hopefully that means there's just more room to move around and see some on-screen action. I really dig the music in the gameplay trailer, even if it is a rip-off of Streets of Rage. This one has been on my Steam wishlist for a while. I'm definitely interested to see how it turns out. I've already talked about the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles a bit, but that's because it's one of my most anticipated games of the year. It looks to have everything I'd ever want in a Turtles game. Variety of characters, great pixel art style, as well as an interesting move list. And of course, it's four players. With .emu behind the development, it's definitely in good hands. I can't wait to see what other surprises they throw at us when the game actually gets released. I just discovered Underling Uprising, and it looks really fun. It's another four-player beat-em-up. There's a cool cartoon art style with a really unique and diverse group of characters. Fighting looks creative with a nice mixture of close range and long range combat. All the playable characters seem to have a lot of variety in their moves and special attacks. This one really seems to be trying to break out of the typical street brawler formula we're used to, and I think that's a good thing.
That's all the upcoming co-op beat-em-ups I have on my list. What are some you're excited about? What did I miss? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Smash that motherfucking like button, you little toad. Beat up, stop, pop, sweat, shotgun, drop, bar, up, flop, chop, slop, co-op.